Quentin Tarantino this, dude. Let's fucking jump all the way back to you getting kicked out of your billet family's house. Yeah, stupid story. It doesn't even uh Don't don't do it. Hey, if it's stupid, make it a little more theatrical no, for I, me. I I I my actually uh dress that dress that thing a up. A friend of mine, Brian Foley, his older brother Pat was a really, really good player. Uh, he's now a Boston cop. So he went out to this national program a couple years for me. Crooked guy. He got this great, great... <laughs> no, no, he's legit. He's actually, like, listening to the fucking microphone when he's not working, looking to hop into scenes that they might no need his shit. help. He's an animal. Super cop. Yeah, he's super cop. I his whole family, that. they're all super he's cops. Harva from Super Troopers. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of them, Secret Service. They're animals. So... I went to this Billet family who was great. Like, this kid's, like, great. My parents how didn't want me to How old are you during the Billet? 16. Uh, and when do you guys usually I, go into Billet families? Uh, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. I think I was turning 17 that season. My parents didn't want me to go. They wanted me to stay at the high school I was at, graduate. And I was like, no, it's, whatever. I had to do it. Now, and I hate, I hate fucking doing this again, but, like, when you play hockey, unless you're, like, in Minnesota... You kind of have to play like travel hockey, right? You can't. You can't just play high school hockey. Massachusetts used to be like Minnesota. They were the only two that you could play high school hockey and get a scholarship or get in the NHL. And it's changed. Where Massachusetts now, if you're that good, you kind of have to go. Yeah. And even Minnesota, like you kind of, it's high school hockey's great, but it's also it's so watered down, like the whole country in terms of hockey. But to get the chance to go to play for USA National Development Program was huge. So I go out, and it's all about, like, my parents, like, we got to get good billets. We got to get good billets. Mm -hmm. And all right, well, we met this great people that Pat Foley had been with, the Shays. <laughs> I go out there, and, the like, the, the really nice, beautiful house in Ann Arbor. And, yeah. like, I got in trouble. That's what the USHL team is. The, the, is that the junior um, USA team? Now they're in Plymouth, Michigan. They, they were in Ann Arbor. Yeah. Um, and uh, excuse me, I went to a game. I went to a yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Bowling yeah. Green. Well, actually, no, they're in Plymouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Plymouth, Plymouth, Michigan. You dummy. <laughs> Figure it out. Uh, basically, though, I, I, my parents sent me out there. They got me this old uh, Ford Explorer, like for a car out there. We drove it out there. I got the car, and I crashed it. I crashed it into my buddy's basketball hoop at his billet family's house. So. I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to say that this car got hit at the movie theater because I'm not going to admit that I did anything, you know, when you're young. And, yeah. and sure as shit, I got caught in the lie because my dad's like, all right, well, let's call the movie theater. I'm sure they have cameras outside because he knew I was lying. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So I admitted to him that I crashed it into a, you know, a basketball hoop. He's like, go tell your billet family. I'm like, it's not even their car. Why do I have to tell them? He's like, go tell them, go tell them. So I went and told them. They acted all disappointed, like so upset. It's like... <laughs> It's not even your fucking car. My dad made me tell you. Why do you even care? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. So they were kind of on edge. So <laughs> fucking 16, 17 of you? Yeah. It's like, what, what do you care? So oh. whatever. They're on edge. And then um, we had a book report. We had a book report to do Fahrenheit 451. If any of you guys have read that book. No. I was supposed to read it, and I didn't. And so I called my billet mom. It was right before Thanksgiving. I said, um, hey, uh, Mrs. Shea, um, I... Uh, I just talked to my teacher and I read the book Fahrenheit 451. I don't really get it. And she told me if I rent the movie, it'll really help me understand it for this book report I have to do. She's like, oh, okay. Can you go rent me? I said, can you go rent me the movie? Because I could go to practice. She's like, yeah, sure. Well, meanwhile, this lunatic, she called the teacher. She's like, did you ask Ryan? This my lunatic. Not even my son, my billet son. Did you tell Ryan to re watch the movie because he didn't get the book? And she's like, no. What are you talking about? So we go on the road. We go to Green Bay. We're playing in Green Bay right across from uh, Lambeau Stadium. On Thanksgiving morning, I wake up. I get a call from the coach, Mike Eves. And he said, come down to my room. And I was like, what? And he's like, all your stuff's packed up at the office. You're kicked out of your Billets family house. Apparently, apparently me lying about, like, not reading this book and needing to see the movie was, like, their final straw to, like, get me kicked out of the house. So they booted me out. <laughs> they packed all my shit up. They had my toothpaste with my sweatshirts. They had like my shoes with like different old hockey gear. And I was done. I had to sleep one night. I was in my car at Pioneer High School in Ann Arbor. And then like the assistant coach took me in. But in the end, it ended up working out great. I met these amazing people, Dave and Dottie Linebaugh. They were about 70 years old. Nicest people in the world. They took me in. They used to make me like sandwiches and shit at night. They were great. So it was great. I ended up leaving the they shade. basically let them do whatever the Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 70 years old. Oh, didn't oh, give a shit shade, what I did. The on. I used to send him like emails and stuff like your parents sock. I was like all over him. <laughs> but it was funny because my good friend had had a great experience with them, but they did not like me. They didn't like you. Hey, Pioneer High School. Is that where you went to high school? Yeah. 
That's where my brother went too. No shit. Yeah, it's right Why? across the street from. Uh, His brother was a good uh, hockey player. He's a really good hockey time. player. And my dad. The kid that played at Corpus Christi? Yeah. Oh, so he was living in Ann Arbor? He was living in Ann Arbor. When I went up to Michigan, he was like 16. And so my dad and him went up to Ann Arbor to be, be around better hockey. And they could see you. And they could see me. That wasn't by my choice, but that's what they wanted to do. And uh, they lived like in the houses, like right across the street from Pioneer. Yeah. So I would cruise over there, catch a free meal. And my brother was a, was a solid hockey player. He was more of a grinder than he was like skilled. Yeah. But I remember going to Pi High and like, you know, they, so I, I came from a private school in, in Massachusetts area, Thayer Academy, shout out the Tigers. And uh, there was like 95 kids in my grade. Mm -hmm. And I went to Pioneer High and there was like 900. Like, yeah, it's I, a massive I, I think school. it was 3,600 kids, like, you know, 3,800 kids in the school. So it was, it was eye opening for me. But I remember, like, Naturally, you got kids from all over the country coming. They're the best 17, 18 year old hockey players in the country. And the girls in the high school are kind of like, all right, we're into these guys. So these dudes who grew up with these girls their whole life, they're like, fuck you. Now, granted, none of the girls like me. I was a complete nerd with big ears. But all these other kids were like trying to fight guys on my team because all of a sudden the girls they knew their whole life were going to them. It was a great show. I got to witness. But Pioneer High was like, <laughs> you had to go. And then Huron High School was also in Ann Arbor. Guys had to go yeah. through like metal, metal detectors to get into that school. I'm the like, what am I? Schools. Exactly. Yeah. Now they're done. Uh, now since they're, they ended up leaving Huron, guys could only go to Pioneer before they went to Plymouth. But that's my NDDP story. So did you get drafted right out of high school? No, I played one year. It changed. It used to be uh, if you went to college, the draft would get delayed a year. Yeah. So I got drafted after my freshman year of college. Now it's the same for everyone. So you do get drafted after. Where'd you go to college? BU, Boston University. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of where I dreamed of going when I was growing up. So. Why don't you, you offer from Michigan? You I could have gone anywhere. I could have gone. I wanted to go back home. Okay, guy. Man, you I know. A. All right. I know. The boy got drafted fifth yeah. overall. Yeah. I know. Stud. I could have gone anywhere. Five star. But I actually, looking back, I would have liked to go. I love BU. I had great experiences, but I would have liked to go to a school that. BU's campus is just downtown Boston. There's no football team. Like, I would have probably, if I could do it again, maybe experience, uh, you know, the entire college experience. I didn't really get that. I hope you guys like this clip. If you want to continue to be for the boys, you need to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share with a friend, and check out our playlist. We have all the links right here on the screen. As always, biggest of hugs and tiniest of kisses. Also, go check out the full episodes, but always for the boys.